a serial fraudster, a man of uncountable identities, a shapeshifter, con artist posed as doctor in $3.5 million lending scam, bought gold coins and fled to Mexico. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Infamous Ghost Money, and today we're going to take a look into the case of Joseph Albert Corey of San Francisco, California. We're going to take a thorough review of the case documents to understand the method he would use to steal over $3.5 million that he would attempt to launder through buying and selling gold. And of course, some simple things you could do to not become a victim of people like Corey. And I'm going to need y'all to follow closely because Corey was not new to this, y'all. He was all the way true to this, as you will soon see. So as always, if you find value in the video or you are entertained, please don't forget to hit that like button. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel to add some quality financial content to your YouTube timeline and stay one step ahead of these fraudsters. All right, let's get right into the information. According to the case paperwork, Corey is described as a seasoned fraudster with no respect for the law. So before we get into the story of how he did his thing, let's break down the method of fraud he used. Corey's scheme was extremely sophisticated and revolved around identity theft, check fraud, loan fraud, and money laundering. According to the case paperwork, he would first begin by stealing the identity of an individual. Specifically for Corey, his thing was stealing the identities of doctors, or he would just straight up use a synthetic identity. Now, if you don't know what a synthetic identity is, make sure you check out the video I did on that topic for more information on it. Corey would then get fake IDs in the names of these victims or fake profiles with his face on them, and he would also cook up false identifying documents to make the profile even stronger. Next, Corey would rent a virtual office mailbox with these false documents, and just like that, he would create a perfect drop address. This address will allow Corey to set up businesses, collect packages, and open bank accounts. And with all this in place, Corey would pull off various schemes and proceed to steal millions that he would launder through gold without leaving a trace. Well, not really, because the feds would eventually catch on to his ways and hit him with nine years. But I, right, now that we got the method out the way, let's jump into the story about your boy, Joseph Albert Corey. On February 1st, 2019, Corey would go into U.S. Bank in disguise wearing shades and a hat to hide his face and set up a sole proprietor business account under the name Dennis DuPont titled Dennis DuPont DBA Medical Practice Management. Once he got the bank account opened, he would proceed to deposit three checks into the business account over the next several weeks in the following amounts. March 19, $34,856. March 29th, $102,805. And finally, April 2nd, $6,419. Each time he visited the bank to make these deposits, he was captured on camera using different ways to attempt to disguise his true identity. The FBI would eventually find out with the business that these checks were written against that all the checks were Fugazi and they never did business with anyone named Dennis DuPont. The treasurer of this business would further state that the spelling on the checks was incorrect and the account that the checks were written against never had checks written against them before. The business held their bank accounts with Bank of America and the bank was able to block all the checks with the exception of one check for 34 G's due to a bank error. Real nice move, Bank of America. Although Corey wasn't able to cash out on all three checks, hitting one out of three was good enough and he would proceed to attempt to buy gold with the money that he was able to get away with. According to the case paperwork, on March 28, 2019, Corey, using the same name, Dennis DuPont, would place an order for 24 one ounce gold coins priced at $1,362 a coin, totaling $32,688. Corey would pay for the gold by check using the cash he stole in his earlier scheme and would email the company the address he wanted the gold coins to be shipped to. Little did Corey know, the FBI was already onto his fraud and would get in contact with the gold seller shortly after Corey placed his order. The FBI would obtain copies of the email communications Corey had with them and trace the address in which Corey requested the coins to be delivered to. They would discover that the address Corey used for his order was actually a virtual office mailbox located in San Francisco, California. 
They got in contact with the location and found out that Dennis DuPont had visited the establishment several times. They described him as a big and tall man which was consistent with the footage of DuPont in the bank and they would say that he submitted an online application for his mailbox rental. From this point, the FBI was all over your boy Corey like white on rice and they would proceed to monitor the mailbox for the delivery of the gold that Corey was expecting. The gold coins were delivered on April 4th, 2019 at approximately 9.46 a.m. and Corey, posing as DuPont, would come pick up his package shortly after at approximately 10.30 a.m. Once the FBI confirmed that they saw DuPont, they would observe him pick up the package and follow him until he hopped in an Uber. The feds would get the information from Uber for DuPont's destination for his trip, the email used on the account, the phone number used on the account, and the payment card information linked to the account. From all this info, they were able to confirm that Dennis DuPont was not Dennis DuPont at all. He was actually Joseph Albert Corey. They would also confirm that the address he was let off at was an apartment complex where he rented an apartment. At this point, the FBI wouldn't go after Corey just yet because it would turn out he actually wasn't sent the gold coins he ordered. The company would end up sending Corey a heavy book in place of his coins because, according to the indictment, they thought Corey would have been arrested when he went to go pick up the package. Corey would contact the company, obviously upset, and demand that the error be rectified. They would lie to him and say that it was a shipping error and proceed to ship him out the gold he originally ordered. But this time around, Corey would provide a different delivery address. The FBI would once again trace this address to another office mailbox rental and confirm with the business, once again, that DuPont had recently rented a mailbox with them. So with that, on April 8th, 2019, they would conduct surveillance on the area, and at approximately 10.04 a.m., Corey would approach the business driving a blue-colored Jaguar. Corey would pick up his package and drive off, but the FBI would capture the license plate of the car he drove and confirm that the car was leased by Joseph Albert Corey. They would also locate Corey's Texas and California motor vehicle records and compare the information on both his licenses to DuPont. This would further confirm that Dennis DuPont was indeed Joseph Albert Corey and that was everything the feds needed to arrest Corey. Talk about getting caught in 4K. But trust y'all, there's a lot more to this story. From his arrest, Corey would eventually plead guilty in November 2019 to mail fraud, but while awaiting his February 22 sentencing, he would go on the run. While on the run, the FBI would eventually catch wind of another scheme that Corey was running right in their faces, but they never caught on to it, and he would continue doing while he was on the run. The second indictment filed on December 16, 2020, breaks down the methods Corey and his co-conspirators used. From March 2019 to October 2020, Corey and several co-conspirators ran a scheme in which they defrauded lenders by stealing the identities of real doctors to apply for loans that were said to be used for the purchase of expensive medical equipment. Next, they would create fake businesses that had names that were similar to legitimate medical device companies. With these fake medical device businesses, they would proceed to cook up fake invoices and quotes that they would include within the fraud loan applications that they would submit. And similar to the first method, they would open these business accounts with addresses associated with rented mailboxes. And finally, once approved, they would have these lenders wire the money directly into the fake business accounts. And also similar to the first scheme, Corey and company would launder the stolen money by buying and reselling gold. Based on the indictment, over the year and a half span in which they ran this scheme, they would submit four loan applications successfully. April 9th, 2019 for $100,000. April 15th, 2019 for $106,000. April 17th, 2019 for $96,000. And finally, July 29th, 2020 for $96,000. The gold reselling hustle was going well until September 18th, 2020, when Corey would attempt to purchase $118,000 worth of gold from a seller, William Youngerman, Inc. Law enforcement would work with the seller and send Corey a ruse package that would be delivered on October 1st, 2020, and two of his co-conspirators would go to pick it up. I guess they must have felt the package was a flop and felt something was up because the indictment says they would flee the scene and drive to Mexico. 
From this point, the case paperwork mentions locating Corey required enormous time, energy, and resources, including cross-border planning and cooperation. He would eventually be caught and arrested on January 13, 2021 in Monterrey, Mexico. When arrested, Corey was found with several false identifications, including an ID and badge identifying him as a special agent for the CIA. He would also insist to the officers that he was Michael Weston until they made it clear as day they knew who he was and they weren't falling for his lies. Cut it out, buddy. Corey would once again plead guilty to wire fraud conspiracy on October 2021, and he would admit in his plea agreement that he defrauded more than 10 victims in his second scheme and caused losses of at least $3.5 million. And when it was all said and done, he was sentenced to 108 months in prison on March 17th, 2022. So people, if we learn anything from this case, like I've mentioned in my past videos, you have to make a point to review your credit on a regular basis. There are many options to choose from nowadays when it comes to monitoring your credit, so do your own research. But whichever one you choose, make sure you activate alerts to be notified once any changes are spotted on your credit. Or you could freeze your credit across all three bureaus if you have no plans of applying for credit anytime soon. And in the event you are applying for something, the process to lift the freeze is incredibly easy and many apps allow you to make those changes right through the app. But with that being said, that's the video on Joseph Albuquerque. Drop a comment and let me know what you think about how he did his thing. Also, if you were entertained by the video or found any value in it, remember to hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel to catch more of my content on financial fraud and how to stay one step ahead of these fraudsters. Aight? Peace.